teaching you how to solve linear systems of equations. In this section, we will carry out basic matrix algebra in MATLAB and apply it to solve problems. We will use X-ray tomography as an example to see how to solve both systems with unique solutions and overdetermined linear systems in MATLAB. Let's begin by reviewing some matrix operators and operations. Remember that MATLAB treats all variables as arrays. Therefore, MATLAB performs matrix operations when evaluating simple arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, and multiplication. As such, size limitations apply according to regular matrix algebra rules. To multiply two matrices, A and B, the inner dimensions must agree. This means that the number of columns in A and the number of rows in B have to be equal. For addition and subtraction, both matrices must have the same dimensions. Although scalars are recognized as one by one matrices in MATLAB, operations between scalars and matrices are treated as special cases for convenience. For example, scalar multiplication of a scalar and a matrix results in each element of the matrix multiplied by the scalar value. For additions and subtractions of a scalar in a matrix, scalar expansion is automatically performed. Each element in the matrix is then added or subtracted by the scalar value. Now that we have reviewed the basic matrix operations, let's see how we can apply them to the X-ray tomography example. X-ray tomography, commonly known as computed tomography, or CT, is a medical imaging method used to obtain cross-sectional pictures of the body. First, a series of x-rays are passed through the body around a single axis of rotation. Mathematical processing is then applied according to the geometric location of the ray source, with respect to the detector, to generate a two-dimensional image from the measured intensities. The data from multiple two-dimensional images may then be used to produce a three-dimensional volumetric image also known as a 3D CT scan. Let's take a look at a single cross-section and see how we can model this as a system of equations in MATLAB. We start by dividing up the cross-section of the body being imaged into discrete blocks. Each of these blocks represents densities that attenuate the x-rays. In this case, we are using a simplified model with only four blocks and they are represented as the column vector x. To image this cross-section, we omit a set of two x-rays at two different angles for a total of four ray paths. This is represented as the A matrix, which maps the blocks that each ray passes through. Each row of A maps the blocks that a single ray passes through. Each column represents a different block. For example, the first row corresponds to the ray A sub 1, which passes through blocks 1 and 2 only, so that the first two columns have a value of 1, and the last two columns have a value of zero. The matrix A represents the model of the system and it maps the block attenuation into the measured intensities B. Notice that A is a square matrix with full rank, which represents a linear system with a unique solution. Given this model, we can take the density structure of a body and simulate the measured intensities B using the equation B equals AX. Now that we have a model for a system with a square matrix, let's see how we can apply basic algebra operations to simulate the x-ray intensities measured. First, we'll create an arbitrary 2x2 two two image and visualize it. As you can see, the image values range from 0 to 1. We will now reshape the x matrix into a vector. Next, we'll create ray path matrix A. Note that it is a square matrix with full rank. Finally, we can calculate the simulated x-ray intensities measured, B, from the densities X and the ray path matrix A by using matrix multiplication. Observe the dimensions or sizes of the matrices A, B, and X. To create a more realistic simulation of the measured intensities, we add some random noise to B. We will first initialize the noise level at 1%. Next, we can create a vector of random values, 
scale it by the noise level, and add it to the original intensities obtained. Now we have both the ideal model of the x-rays measured and a more realistic simulation that includes some noise. We can then visualize the simulated measured intensities. Notice that matrix addition and multiplication is implicit since all variables are treated as arrays in MATLAB. So far we have developed a model of a system to simulate the measured x-ray intensities. However, if we had started with the measured intensities, we could also use this model to obtain the bone densities. In other words, we can obtain the densities by solving the system using the backslash operator. Given the equation ax equals b for this system, we can rearrange the equation to solve for x. We can use the backslash operator to solve this system. Since A is square and has full rank, the system is determined. Therefore, the solution obtained is unique. In a slightly different system, we have the equation XA equals B. Since the inverse of A is on the right of B, we use the forward slash instead. To obtain the densities from both the ideal model and the realistic model with noise, we can use the backslash to carry out a matrix left divide. We can then calculate the error between the densities obtained from the model and the original densities. As you can see, the ideal densities are practically the same as the original. The difference is due to the round-off errors from the forward and backward calculation. For the realistic model with noise, we can see that the error is close to the 1% noise that we introduced. Let's review the syntax for using the back viewed solving a determined system. We previously reviewed solving a determined system. This is a square system of equations with full rank where the solution is unique. An undetermined system is that in which we have fewer equations than unknowns. In this scenario, we will have a smaller number of rows than columns. We can find an infinite number of solutions to this system of linear equations. We solve an underdetermined system of equations just as we solve a determined system of equations. MATLAB will return a result with the maximum number of zero elements possible. Up next, we will study an overdetermined system of linear equations. This system of equations has more equations than unknowns and is represented with a matrix with more rows than columns. This type of system generally has no exact solution. However, we can find the least squares fit to the given data. Let's see how we can solve an overdetermined system. Here the model has been expanded to 3 by 3. Therefore, we need more rays to accurately measure the block densities. We will use three rays from four different directions for a total of 12 ray paths. The ray path matrix A is now 12 rows, one for each ray, and nine columns, one for each block. Since it has more rows than columns, this system is overdetermined. The backslash allows us to solve this overdetermined system by calculating the least square solution. In this way, we can obtain the block densities just as we did for the previous system. Using the same process as for the previous system, we first set the length of the side of the square m equal to 3. We use m to create an arbitrary 3 by 3 image using the RAND function. We reshape this data into a column vector. Next, we will create the ray path matrix A using the function ray trace that we have prepared. The function is available with the downloadable example files which you can further investigate. It takes in the width of the square object and the number of ray path angles. The dots represent the blocks that each ray passes through. As you can see from the animation, 
there are three rays for each of the four angles. Next we calculate B, the simulated X-ray intensities measured from X, and A, the ray path matrix using matrix multiplication. Using the Who's command, we can see that A is a 12 by 9 matrix. We can then add noise to the measured intensities as we did previously. Finally, we can back calculate the density model from the simulated intensities measured using the backslash operator. We can then calculate the error between the densities obtained from the model and the original densities. Once again, the ideal model is almost the same as the original. For the realistic model with noise, we can see that the error is close to the 1% noise that we introduced. In this case, the solution is a least square solution because the A matrix is overdetermined. However, the result is similar to the square system, and we have seen how the backslash operator can be used to solve both determined and overdetermined systems.